This is the Clinton Bridge, located in Clinton, New Jersey. The bridge runs over the Raritan River, which is a major river in central New Jersey. It is a permutation of a truss bridge that caters to all types of travelers. Its dynamic design has allowed it to keep up with the demands of everyday use. This is similar to the way a teacher must be dynamic in their teaching style over the years, allowing themselves to learn from their students about how to teach them better. The social engineer needs to take their environment into consideration while constructing a product that improves the efficiency of the community, such as a building or a bridge. How can the product improve the upstanding of social life? What kinds of people will be using it? What materials do I have and what materials do I need? A good social engineer asks lots of questions and draws lots of outside information to create a product best suited for social norms. Likewise, a teacher must draw from current ideas and implement them into their own teaching, just as a social engineer would only use materials that are both up to date and suitable for the project. So, what is a social engineer? A social engineer strives to change the attitudes and behaviors of a large group on a large scale. This is accomplished through the collection of facts and research to supplement the engineer's original ideas. This combination creates the end product. This is similar to a teacher researching multiple famous pedagogues, but still having their own philosophy of teaching that combines their original ideas and the ideas drawn from research. The following skit demonstrates an important bullet point from John Dewey's educational theories. The skit exemplifies a teacher who is simply absorbing the ideas of another pedagogue and not weighing in on his own educational ideas. Here we have Andrew Maggio, a young music educator reading about Paolo Freire on his iPad. Let's take a listen to his inner thoughts. Hmm. Okay. Freire rejects the idea that kids are vessels that need to be filled with knowledge from the teacher. I can agree with that. And baking stimulates oppression. But I feel that sometimes baking can be helpful if done with the right subject and in the right way. But Freire is a big name, so I must be wrong to think that. So I will never bank. Eh, wrong. Although we can come to terms that banking can be counterproductive in the classroom during certain situations, sometimes banking is necessary and more useful than any other method of teaching. Although the little voice in your head may disagree with people like Freire, don't discount it or take it for absolute truth, for we should always ask questions and never be content with what you know from others. Maybe these questions in my head happen for a reason. I wouldn't just think about this stuff if I didn't think it was applicable or practical. Maybe I should take a second look at my own questions. We will check up on Andrew later. See what he decides to do with his own thoughts as well as prairies. Students and teachers are similar to cattle and farmhands. The practice of teaching has not changed for decades and why should we bother to change what works? A teacher acting as a social engineer sees the problems in the system and makes small but profound changes in their teaching technique. These changes help the students make changes within themselves and helps them apply their knowledge to their lives. You might be saying to yourself, why would I ever need to update my philosophy of teaching? A teacher has to consider every aspect of life when drafting their personal teaching philosophy. It's important for the teacher to be aware of what is going on in the world around them. Technology is a huge phenomenon that continues to change the face of education as it develops. Educators must open their minds to new possibilities in education as it it is a very radical field. What if a teacher had a very close-minded philosophy of education? This next skit portrays such an educator. Let's watch. Okay, class, today we're going to have a pop essay assignment. Oh, no! no! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, okay, settle down. You're all going to be writing a 1,000-word essay on songs in F-sharp minor. You have one hour to complete the essay. And you will be writing this essay using... typewriters. Uh, Mr. Henry? Yes, Andrew? Why are we using typewriters to write this essay? You do realize it's the year 2011, right? Yeah, we're in the 21st century. Why can't we use computers and word processing to do our essay? Now you listen here, you young whippersnappers. I have been giving this assignment to my classes for 40 years. When I was your age, we didn't even have typewriters to write our papers with. We had to go to school up and down through snow with air and back four miles. Now quit complaining and start now. Freeze!
Okay, so what's the problem here? Mr. Henry hadn't changed his curriculum ever since he started teaching 40 years ago. He still makes students use typewriters to write each of their writing assignments. According to John Dewey, this is bad teaching. The teacher did not open his mind to the modern era of technology, and his students are suffering for it. As an educator, one must not be blind to research and information that supplements their education of science or philosophy of teaching. Dewey believes that education is a science. There is an infinite amount of material that can be put into a philosophy of teaching. A good teacher is someone who adapts their teaching style by digesting multiple teaching philosophies and incorporates them into their own philosophy. Social engineers work in a similar fashion. They must draw upon the current social norms in order to improve the quality of life. Obviously, the example with the typewriter is a bit far-fetched. No teacher today would be using a typewriter this far into the 21st century, but the concept is universal. Teachers still use ancient projection equipment when a smart board would be cleaner and more efficient. This shows that Mr. Henry did not adapt his philosophy to the technologies around him. Let's replay this scenario with Mr. Henry adapting his philosophy of teaching to the present day. Okay, class, today we're going to have a pop essay assignment. Oh, no! no! <laughs> no! Why? Okay, okay, settle down. You're all going to be writing a 1,000 word essay on songs in F sharp minor. You have one hour to complete the essay. You'll be writing this essay using the school computers. Let's all head down to the computer lab so you can type up your assignments. By utilizing the technology that is actually from this century, Mr. Henry has successfully altered his teaching philosophy from years past. According to Dewey, teachers must keep a dynamic philosophy of education that changes with the environment around them. A teacher's own ideas are just as important as the framework on which they base them. Let's check back in on Andrew. It seems like he's finished absorbing Ferry's thoughts and ideas and is ready to draft his own philosophy of education. Let's see how he's doing so far. So I can agree with some things that Ferry says, but there are some things I just can't wrap my mind around. I can't see how this can be relevant according to today's standards. Perhaps I can mold it somehow to work with my education today. If I implement my own teaching ideas into what Ferry is saying, my philosophy will encompass a greater area of teaching. Ferry has great ideas and concepts about education, but ultimately I need to make my own decisions about my own philosophy. It seems that Andrew has learned what it means to be a teacher in the light of a social engineer. In order to create a strong philosophy of education, you must have a strong balance between your own ideas and the ideas of other pedagogues. The balance is a crucial part of education. Perhaps an aspiring educator only studied the ideas and the stories of Joan Wink in their undergraduate study. While Joan Wink is very intelligent and has groundbreaking ideas in education, there are many other important pedagogues that bring up points to consider. The most important of these pedagogues is yourself. You must not discredit your own educational theories and ideas simply because you are either inexperienced or young. Okay children, think critically and reflect upon today's lesson. What did you all learn today? Yes, Ian. A teacher should never be content with what they already know. Very good, Andrew. A good teacher should always ask questions and think critically. Anyone else? Check. A teacher should always approach a problem from different angles or viewpoints and think with multiple open minds. Correct. Teachers must not be blind to valuable resources that can greatly improve their teaching dispositions. One more thing? Anyone? A teacher should keep a healthy balance between their own ideas and the ideas of others. Very good, class. Your homework assignment is to come up with your own philosophy of teaching. It must be no shorter than 50 pages, single spaced, and you must use a typewriter. No! no!